Hi, I'm Tim and I want to teach you to build products using JavaScript for free. My reasoning is quite simple. There's a whole lot of different courses, articles, tutorials and so on on how to actually program in JavaScript or really any other language. Some of those are pretty good, you know, like if you take something like you don't know JS, it's actually amazingly good and if you haven't read it, go and read it. But the problem is that almost none of them actually tell you how do you build something real, how do you take your idea and turn it into a product, what tools do you use, how you proceed day to day and you know what skills do you actually need to finish the product. That's why I decided to make this course, a course that will actually teach you how to build a complete product starting from the idea and working towards a complete application that will be continuously deployed, uh, tested and available for multiple platforms and all of that using JavaScript. So during the course, I will not talk about the basics of programming. Um, so if you don't know JavaScript, you have to learn it separately, but I'll rather focus on the high level concepts, tools and approaches that I personally use in my everyday work. Basically, I assume that you are relatively familiar with JavaScript world and know how to write a bit of code here and there, but maybe not familiar with all the frameworks and libraries that I'll be talking about. That's not a big deal. Bear in mind the things that I'll talk about and approaches that I'll show are by no means the only right way to do things, simply the way that I prefer to do things in my everyday work. And you know, since I'm a human, I can also do things in suboptimal ways, have mistakes in things that I do or not know everything. And if you think there are any errors or you know better ways to do something, um, basically let me know and I would love to learn new things along with you. Like I'm, I. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna learn a lot of new things just by trying to talk about what I do. <laughs> but yeah, let's see how it goes. So another thing to note is that um, even though I do have a list of topics I want to cover over the duration of these uh, videos, uh, I'm very much open to all the questions and suggestions you might have about the sort of uh, spin-off topics. Yeah, And if there's a lot of interest in a specific area, I will make additional videos that will cover those areas. Um, I also want to note that all the content that I will produce over the duration of this course, in, this includes code videos, articles, whatever I make basically, will be released under non-restrictive licenses and will be available for free with no advertisement or any other monetization bollocks. So feel free to fork it, improve it, remix it and let me know if you make something awesome out of it. I, I would love to hear that really. With that said, let's get to the interesting part. Uh, today I want to talk about the first question people usually have after finishing a software development course. So how to actually start developing a product? Well, before you start to develop a product, you obviously need an idea of that product. And uh, most of you will likely have their own ideas, but um, this specific course I came up with a relatively interesting idea that's quite simple to implement. It allows for a variety of additional things that we can do that are pretty cool, like machine learning, mobile applications, and some other things that I will talk about later. The idea is actually pretty simple. We're going to do a crowdsourced prediction service, and it's basically going to be a website where people can ask others, uh, we'll call them experts, to predict outcomes of specific events. Uh, for example, you know, what's going to be the weather tomorrow? And people can answer that, uh, or for example, who's going to win in... Uh, the Olympics next, or who's going to win the most medal in the Olympics next year, I guess would be the correct question here. Uh, so make it, to make it a bit more interesting, we're not just going to let people answer because that's boring, we're going to weight them. So basically when expert answers correctly, he gets a higher rating, where incorrectly he gets a lower rating. And then those ratings would be used to sum up the final score and give you, um, you know, how, how precise the uh, prediction was basically. And we're going to try some machine learning on top of that later on if we... Uh, get time and if there's enough interest basically. So the cool thing about this idea is that it's a simple create, read, update, delete application. We create uh, those questions, we read them and display them to users, we update it with the answers and then you know if you made something wrong you delete this question. Really simple. Crud, um, paradigm is you know the basic one that you can actually do and we're gonna start with that. But it does allow for some very interesting extensions. For example we can do real-time poll updates uh, when the answers come via WebSockets. Or we can try to add natural language processing and extract the area of the specific questions to rate experts based uh, basically in these areas, not just general uh, expert weight, but the expert weight in the specific area. You get the idea. There's plenty of things that we can do here. All right, so we have the idea. Uh, let's see what do we need to build for it. So the first would be the backend that would actually handle the data and of course the database to store it in. 
Then we would need a web application, uh, which basically will be a primary entry point for our users. Once all of this is done, we also want to configure a continuous delivery that would uh, handle all the deployment for us and testing, of course. And then to make it a bit more fun, we'll build a mobile and desktop applications uh, for our little service just to show you how it's basically done. Right, so now we know what we're going to build and what exactly we need for that. Time to figure out our immediate requirements. Uh, for now, I'm going to talk about very basic software that you'll need during the first steps of development. Picking frameworks, databases and all those uh, fancier stuff will come in a bit later in the next videos. So uh, here's what you will need in the immediate uh, moment. First of all, uh, you will need some sort of shell. Uh, for some reason, a lot of dev courses omit any sort of shell usage. I and you know, I know a lot of really good developers who almost never use shell. Like most of them are Java guys, but I don't know if there's a correlation. But I think that learning uh, to use shell can highly benefit you as a developer. For once, uh, due to simply the Unix paradigm and the piping between commands, this is something that can completely change your mind. So I'm going to use shell during the process a lot and I recommend that you do too, although you know that's not mandatory. I personally prefer, prefer using Z shell with all my Z shell configs, but which one exactly you use is completely up to you. If you do want Z shell, you can grab it on zshell.org and all my Z shell can be found on GitHub. Uh, the link, links to those things are in the video description. You can find them under the section shells. All right, so the first thing is shell, the next one is Git. So same thing here um, goes for the Git and version control in general. You rarely see any dev courses talk about it, but in real life, this is actually something that you're gonna be using pretty much daily, should you work in team or even alone. You know, if you're not using it, you, are, you can be wasting a lot of your time and you can save a lot of your time again if you have your code version. So go ahead and install the Git on your system. You can find the really good guide on how to do that and how to start over at git-scm.com. Again, the link is in the description of this video. The next thing you will need is Node.js. So since we're gonna do JavaScript and we're gonna do full stack thing uh, with mobile and desktop applications, it's obvious that you know we're gonna be using JavaScript for everything. So I hope it's quite obvious why you need Node.js here. Uh, in addition to running our server-side code, the node will do some heavy lifting related to client's compilation that includes web, desktop, and mobile, as I already mentioned, uh, and some other minor stuff like linting and testing and, you know, all these things. Uh, you can install uh, Node.js either from official website at nodejs.org, or you can use one of the node version managers. For example, I prefer uh, NVM. Um, you can grab it at GitHub. There's as well like N and variety of others, but that's completely up to you. Once again, links to Node.js website and NVM are in the description of the video. Okay, the next thing you would need is a code editor. Obviously, you know, you will have to write some code, so you would want a code editor. Uh, there's plenty of JavaScript IDEs out there. For example, WebStorm is probably the most popular one, but I personally prefer lighter and faster and simpler editors. And there's a whole tons of them out there, but uh, my personal three favorites uh, for a couple of years have been Sublime Text 3, Atom, and Visual Studio. And actually lately I've been replacing Atom with Visual Studio after they released the tabs and some additional um, extensions for it. But it doesn't really matter which one you pick as long as it supports a list of the tools I'm gonna, and features basically I'm gonna give you now. So first of all, of course, it needs to support JavaScript and ideally you want an editor that you can extend later to uh, other languages. Uh, most of them actually do that right now, so it's not a big deal. You do want good auto-completion. This is something that can save a lot of time and a lot of pain for you. Um, another thing you want is editor config. This is a um, tiny little plugin that basically unifies the configuration for your project to everyone who clones it or forks it. And whenever you get a pull request back, it will be formatted in the way that you want it to be formatted. In addition, we want ESLint, which is a linter, which will ensure the code quality and uh, code styling again, but on a different angle. I will talk about it a bit later. And since we're gonna use uh, React.js for our front-end and for mobile device, we also want JS6 support, which is the um, uh, XML-like language for writing uh, React components. Uh, most of the editors, again, already support it. It's pretty um, wide adopted, so yeah, I mean, you know, nothing um, extra fancy here. You can find the links to those 
plugins for, again, Sublime, Atom, and code that I use in the description to this video. If you're gonna use different editor, feel free to Google it. I'm absolutely sure you're gonna find them. All right, uh, I think that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction to Git. We'll initialize the project. I will show you what exactly you can do with Git and why is it so useful. Again, it's not gonna be a tutorial, so if you want a tutorial, you will have to go to GitHub probably. They have a really awesome tutorial there. But it will give you a general idea of why Git is useful and, and how do you apply it in everyday life. That's about it. Uh, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.